On the news, Minister of Agriculture and Food Security flag of 2024-2025 National Dry Season Farming in Calabar. Cross River State House of Assembly frowns at illegal mining activities in Agoepo, calls for concerted effort to stem the tide. Details in just a moment. Good evening and good to have you on NTA Calabar News at 7. I am Oba Hysens. Now the news in details. With food security on the front burner of President Bola Tinubu Renew Hope agenda and ensuring the availability of staples such as wheat all year round, the Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Senator Abubakar Kiari, has flagged off the 2024-2025 National Dry Season Farming in Calabar, the Cross River State Capital. Paul Eber reports that the event is organized by the National Agricultural Growth Scheme Pocket under the Federal Minister of Agriculture and Food Security in partnership with Cross River State Minister of Agriculture and Irrigation Development. In a bid to bring back the glory of food security in the country, the Dry Season Farming is initiated with 16 states selected for the production of wheat with other staples in the first phase, with Cross River State as the only state from the South South. Flagging of the national project with the distribution of items to 3,000 registered wheat farmers supported with subsidized agricultural input. The Minister of Agriculture and Food Security affirmed that the collaboration with subnationals will assist farmers grow better yields to attain food security. For the 2024-2025 rice season farming, the project is targeted to support 250,000 wheat farmers across the wheat producing states who subsidize agricultural inputs to cultivate about 250,000 hectares with an expected output of about 750,000 metric tons of wheat to be added to the food reserve to reduce dependency on the importation of the product and also increase domestic consumption. By this approval, the state has become the 16th wheat producing state in Nigeria and is now the only one in the southern, in the entire southern Nigeria. We express our appreciation to the Honorable Minister for this recognition and see it as a propeller to contribute meaningfully to agricultural production in our dear country. I pray and I hope that um, this year's preparation towards the dry season will be a bountiful harvest for us at the end of the day Amen. and with the support of the development partners, especially the state governors who are giving us conducive environment and atmosphere for us to be able to feed ourselves as a nation. The minister also inaugurated a 5 million juvenile capacity model archery by the federal government NDDC FAD Assisted Life ND project in partnership with USAID Face the Future to transform the livelihood of the people. This memorable event is one of the testaments of the commitment of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu GCFA to translating the Renewed Hope Agenda into tangible actions. The archery has the capacity of producing over 5 million juveniles per quarter and is complemented with a standard laboratory and training hall. The Ultramada Fish Archery Facility that has been commissioned to be is expected to revolutionize the aquaculture value chain in Cross River State. The anticipated success of this facility will lead to its replication in other parts of the state. There were goodwill messages by stakeholders and development partners. In Calabar, Paul Abel. And here is. To ensure environmental sustainability, the Cross River State House of Assembly is calling on the state government 
to direct relevant agencies to checkmate ongoing illegal mining activities in the state. State House of Assembly correspondent report that this was premised on a motion of urgent public importance brought before the House by member representing Yakot to state constituency, Mercy Akpama, on the effect of illegal mining activities in Nagoyekbo, Yakot local government area of Cross River State. Worried by the negative effect, environmental degradation and flagrant contravention of the Mineral and Mining Act 2007 on the right to receive royalties and multiple forms of deprivation of host communities of their right as provided for. The lawmaker Yakotu State constituency, Mercy Akmama, decried the unpleasant situation faced by her constituent due to activities of illegal miners, calling for urgent attention to prevent breakdown of law and order in the community. As a result of mining activities being carried out in Agoeko, there is a large influx of youth aged 15 to 20 alleged to have come from the north, the northern part of Nigeria and Niger, residing in Agoy Forest. Mr. Speaker, it is most worrisome to note that these youths have been forcefully evicted from the Agoy Forest and are seeking refuge in the Gold Village by one Allah Jisule, who allegedly bribed his way through the chiefs to mobilize gold mining in the area. These young boys are everywhere they are suffering. They are passing through trauma, no place to sleep, no food to eat. They are constituting nuisance, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the presence of these boys on the streets of Uko and Agoyoko poses a threat to peace in the area. Members during plenary deliberated and frowned at the disturbing trend in Agoyoko. Mr. Speaker, we have been talking about legal men in this house consistently. And uh, Agoeko will not be an exception because it's an issue that have been, we have, our people have suffered so much in our various communities. And our chiefs in various communities and various local governments are not everyone because they collect a lot of things from these foreign people like the northern, not people from the northern part of the city. And these then free access to our communities and villages to bring in the government. I urge this out that. This will be the last time we talk about the issue of legal mining in this house. So I see no reason why the state government, Minister of Lands, the community is not well involved in the issue of illegal miners. I feel the chiefs will use their own approach about what is happening there. And I'm happy that the government, by the case of God, is a special committee, the tax force. Sort of in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Mines and Arts. So this uh, agency or the tax force is to address all illegal miners. So our government is very, very proactive in setting up that committee. I think these are motions or our relations we get towards inviting or inviting the newly formed tax force so that they can go into action to cash or to bring all these into the table. Illegal mining in Agoy Eko. We are made to understand that the miners came in and found gold in Agoy Eko. And the whole place is flooded by human beings. Some miners all over the place. So there is now a clash between the chiefs and the youths. So they are sending these children out and the whole of Yako local government is littered by unknown youths from the north. Some of them don't even know where they come from. They were just brought in for mining and now they are sent out of the, some of them are sent out of the, uh, the forest by the villagers. Many are still inside the forest. So. We deem it necessary as Yakov people to put out a cry that all the agencies involved 
in mining, in security, should come to Yakao local government area. There is serious insecurity in Yakao local government area because these young people are all over the place. Mining law as amended 2007 subsection 2021 20, to 24 states it clearly that for any purpose mining takes place and anything is seen in that position or in that land, the miners need to pay royalty to the community. But from what we understand, from myself and my colleagues, my colleague, from all the investigations we went into, we found out that the royalty the miners rather paid to the community was to cook food for the chief, so the chief said. And this is very wrong. So we must go back to the rules and the regulations. The House further reiterated the importance of reuniting minors used as child laborers with their families, strict adherence to all provisions of the Mineral Mining Act 2007, with a view to preventing the hazards of illegal mining by preserving environmental health and biodiversity sustainability initiative of the state government. To set the ball rolling in Udupani local government area, Chairman of the Council, Leti Masido, has inaugurated nine-man transition committee in the Council Secretariat with a charge to bring to bear their wealth of experience in discharge of their duty. Members of the committee include Barrister Eyo Onsa Ekbo as chairman, Barrister Eded Basi, Silo Ekpanyong, Honorable Inyong Etim Edem, Mrs. Mabel Inyang, Prince Inyang Inyang, Honorable Ekon Eyibo, Sir George Akon, Barrister Eded Eyibo as Secretary. In his accepting speech, the Chairman of the Transition Committee, Eyon Saekbo, assures the Chairman of the Council of the Committee readiness in making recommendations on a proper check on the assets and liabilities and scrutiny of the Hanover Node presented by the previous administration. You're watching news coming from the studio of NTA Calabar. You can also watch the news on our social media handle at display on the screen. News continue after the break. <laughs>